thanks for watching and today we'll find a really 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 cool sum namely the sum of 1 over n squared plus 1. So our goal is to find let's say the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1 which is really 1 over 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 etc. So almost the sum of the reciprocal squares, but you add a one to the denominator. And this will lead us to the beautiful world of Percival's identity for complex Fourier series. Because once again, here is a setting. So suppose you have a function f of x, and you now expand it out as a complex Fourier series. So sum from minus infinity to infinity of Cn e of i m x. Now this time on the full integral, minus pi pi. Then the good news is everything we talked about so far still holds, except with the following modifications. So first of all, I would like to remind you the dot product here is the integral from minus pi to pi of f of x, g of x bar dx. But remember, the bar of a plus bi is a minus bi. And in particular, the length of your function, the length of f of x squared, it's f dotted with f, which now is the integral from minus pi to pi of f of x times f of x bar dx. And that's the same thing as the integral from minus pi to pi of absolute value of f of x squared dx. So here I just use the fact that the complex number times its conjugate gives you the length of that number squared. And why is that true? It's because if you take a plus bi and multiply it by a minus bi, so f of x times f of x bar, that gives you a squared and then minus a bi plus a bi and then minus b squared i squared. Now, the a, b, i's cancel out. i squared is minus 1, so with this minus, it becomes a squared plus b squared. And that's precisely the length of a plus b, i squared. That's what we use. And then, another thing that we use in the Percival identity is e, i, m, x dotted with itself, so the length of e i m x squared, that is e i m x dotted with e i m x, which in this case is the integral from minus pi to pi to pi of e i m x times the conjugate of e i m x, which remember in the previous video, I show that it's the same thing as e of minus i m x dx. And the nice thing is this function inside becomes 1, and so the integral is 2 pi. So what before was pi over 2 is now 2 pi, and then similar to the derivation of Percival's identity, we now get the following formula. So, complex Parseval namely, if a function f of x has a complex expansion, so m from minus infinity to infinity of cm ei mx on the interval minus pi pi, then we get the following formula for the sums of squares of the coefficients. So then the sum from minus infinity to infinity of the absolute value of cm squared 
is now 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus pi to pi of f of x squared. Yeah. So once again, this 2 pi comes from the eimx dotted with itself. And now, let's apply it to an expansion that we calculated before. So let's apply it to the function f of x equals e to the x. And I would like to remind you what we found. So we found that the CM, I wrote it here, that the CM was 1 over pi, 1 over, I believe, 1 minus IM, and then minus 1 to the M, and then cinch of pi. And so, let's apply to this identity. So, if we take the sum from minus infinity to infinity of the absolute value of cm squared, that is the sum from minus infinity to infinity of absolute value of this squared, so 1 over pi squared, 1 over 1 minus im squared, and then minus 1 to the m squared, and then cinch of pi squared. And this simplifies quite nicely, so that is the sum from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over pi squared. Here I use absolute value of a plus bi is a squared plus b squared. So this becomes 1 over 1 squared plus, if you want, minus m squared. This is plus minus 1. So if you take absolute value, you get 1. And then finally, cinch of pi is positive. So this gives you cinch squared of pi. And once again, I want to emphasize here, I just use the fact that a plus bi squared is a squared plus b squared. Because the length of a plus bi is square root of that. So the nice thing is, so this on the one hand simplifies, so we get the following. So once again, I rewrote the formula from before, but again, minus m squared is the same thing as m squared. And then the cool thing is, anything that doesn't depend on m, we can pull out. So we end up getting, I believe, cinch squared pi over pi squared over pi squared. And then the sum that we want from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over m squared plus 1. So now we calculated the sum squares of the coefficients. And now let's deal with the integral. So we have 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus pi to pi of f of x squared, dx. And that's 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi of e to the x squared, dx. Now, this is a positive function, so we can remove the absolute value, and we're left with 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi of e of 2x, dx. And we can evaluate that integral, so it's 1 over 2 pi, and then e to the 2x over 2, over 2, from minus pi to pi, and we get 1 over 2 pi, and then e to the 2 pi, minus e of minus 2 pi, over 2. And as luck may have it, we can actually express this more nicely in terms of the cinch function. Because I would like to remind you, so cinch of x is 1 half times e to the x minus e of minus x. So in the end, we end up getting 1 over 2 pi, cinch of 2 pi. And then all we have to do is combine both sides. 
So we have the sun side and we have the sinh side. And then let's just equate both of them. Okay, so now I just rewrote everything. Sinh squared pi over pi squared times the sum we want is 1 over 2 pi, sinh of 2 pi. And we can simplify this a little bit so we can cancel out one of the pi's and we can solve for a sum. So the sum from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1 is um, pi over 2, sinh of 2 pi over sinh squared of pi. Now, we're almost done. The problem is we don't want the sum from negative infinity to infinity, but we want the sum from 1 to infinity. And the way we can do this, we can split this in three cases where m is negative, m is 0, and m is positive. You will see why. And in this case, I find it easier to just write down the terms in the sum. So for negative m, you have 1 over minus 3 squared plus 1 plus 1 over minus 2 squared plus 1 plus 1 over minus 1 squared plus 1. So that's the terms with m negative. Then we have the term with m equals 0. So 1 over 0 squared plus 1 m equals 0, and then the terms with positive m, so 1 over 1 squared plus 1, plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1, and then let's do 1 more, 1 over 3 squared plus 1, plus dot dot dot, which equals, so that's once again the positive terms, and all this equals pi over 2, and then sinh of 2 pi over sinh squared of pi. And notice there's something nice that's happening. This term equals to this term, same with here, same with here. So actually the sum of the negative m is the same thing as the sum for positive m. So those things are the same. So this huge sum is just two times that red box plus the term at m equals zero, which now we can simplify to the following. And so what we end up getting is two times the sum for the positive x, one to infinity, one over n squared plus one, plus the term at m equals 0, which is just 1, and that's pi over 2. And then I believe we have sinh of 2 pi over sinh squared of pi. And that finally allows us to find our sum. So m from 1 to infinity, or 2 times is 1, m sum from m from 1 to infinity of m squared plus 1 is pi over 2 sinh of 2 pi over sinh squared of pi minus 1. And then to get the sum that we want, we just divide by 2. So the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over m squared plus 1, that now becomes pi over 4 sinh of 2 pi over sinh squared of pi minus 1 half. I mean, whoa! Who would have thought that we would get such a crazy answer for such an innocent sum? In particular, what's interesting is, well, an antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1 is arctangent, but no arctangent appears in this sum, which is kind of crazy. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.